roommates 35-year-old Cole Bressett and 51-year-old Chris Relation are behind bars after 42-year-old Jeffrey Karen was fatally shot and his body was dumped. Authorities said that Cole and Jeffrey got into a dispute involving drugs on the 24th or the 25th of October. Chris allegedly helped Cole after the killing and did not contact police about it. At around 4.30pm on Friday the 27th of October, Hunters contacted authorities after discovering a dead man's body in a remote area about a quarter of a mile off Gore Road in Plainfield, Vermont. He was found lying face down in the clearing and there were burn marks and charring on and around the body. State troopers arrived at the scene and determined that the male died under suspicious circumstances. Authorities said there were multiple game cameras set up on the property and the cameras showed a vehicle on the property early in the morning on the 25th of October. The vehicle was seen driving near the area where the body was found and was seen leaving about 30 minutes later. Detective Sergeant Isaac Miriam of the Vermont State Police said that one of the photographs showed a fire in the area where the body was found. He said other members of law enforcement were showing photos from the scene and reported that the body may have been that of 42-year-old Jeffrey Caron due to his prior interactions with police, including a recent search warrant in Bar Vermont where drugs were found. The medical examiner conducted an autopsy two days later and identified the victim as Jeffrey Caron, who died from a gunshot wound to his chest, and his death was ruled a homicide. Sergeant Merriam said that police spoke with Joni Bressett, Jeffrey's co-defendant, who's facing drug charges following the search warrant that was executed in Bar. Police said Joni had been selling drugs out of her apartment in North Bar Manor, with Jeffrey's assistance. Joni said that Jeffrey and Chris appeared at her apartment on the 24th of October. She said she overheard the pair talking about robbing Cole of his drugs and money. Joni said that Chris and Cole lived together a few miles away in Berlin Mobile Home Park. Authorities said that surveillance footage showed Jeffrey and Chris arriving and then leaving in Joni's apartment on the 24th of October. The video showed the pair leaving in Joni's Nissan Rogue SUV, and Chris is then seen returning to the apartment alone in Joni's vehicle the next day. Investigators said that Joni's Nissan appeared to match the vehicle seen in the game camera footage in Plainfield. On the 27th of October, police located and seized Joni's vehicle and noted it had a significant amount of dried mud inside the wheel wells. Joni told authorities that several people had access to her vehicle since the 25th of October. Joni said she had access to Jeffrey's Facebook account and showed investigators messages between Jeffrey and Chris about drug transactions. While conducting a search of Joni's vehicle, blood was found on the rear passenger floorboard. On late Monday night on the 30th of October, police executed a search warrant at Chris and Cole's mobile home in Berlin. The pair were home at the time, and were taken into custody after initially refusing commands of police. During an interview, Chris said he let Cole stay at his home and Cole paid him in crack cocaine, but he grew tired of the arrangement. Chris said that he no longer wanted Cole to live with him, but he and Jeffrey devised a plan to remove Cole from the home, taking his drugs and money in the process. Chris said that he lured Cole out of his home under the guise of a trip to Walmart, while Jeffrey snuck inside armed with a metal pipe awaiting their return. When Chris and Kyle returned back at the mobile home, Jeffrey confronted Kyle, and during the altercation, Kyle shot Jeffrey in the chest. Chris said he watched Jeffrey die, and Kyle pointed the gun at him, telling him to keep his mouth shut. Chris told detectives that Kyle then used Joni's vehicle to move Jeffrey's body, and Chris initially denied helping Kyle move the body, but he later admitted to helping move Jeffrey's body to an area near the door. Chris said that Kyle was alone when he drove with Jeffrey's body, and later returned about 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, telling Chris that the matter had been taken care of and not to ask any questions. Chris admitted he sent Jeffrey a message on Facebook asking about his whereabouts, even though he knew Jeffrey was dead. While interviewed with detectives, Cole admitted to using cocaine and had been living with Chris. He never said he met Jeffrey, nor had he heard of him, and denied causing Jeffrey any harm, nor disposing of his body. Cole was charged with second-degree murder, and Chris was charged for accessory after the fact of second degree murder and remained held at the Northwestern State Correctional Facility without bond. Police said that Cole was wanted on pending arrest warrants for separate unrelated charges, including a felony count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. The investigation into the matter continues. Police are searching for a man who's suspected of killing a female relative and then taking a severed head with him. At around 3.40pm on Thursday the 2nd of November, authorities responded to a home at 2528 Pomo Trail in Santa Rosa, California on reports of a possible homicide. 
When officers arrived, they found a deceased woman inside. She had been decapitated, but they were unable to locate her head. Upon further investigation, police identified 24-year-old Luis Gustavo Roy Lopez of Santa Rosa as a suspect. It's believed that Lewis took the victim's head with him after leaving a residence, and that he may still be in possession of it. Police have not released the victim's name or age or relationship to the suspect, but neighbours said the victim was Lewis's grandmother. Lewis is described by police as a Hispanic male, being 5 foot 6 inches tall and about 150 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt or jacket, black pants and white shoes. He has the number 420 and a marijuana leaf tattoo on the left side of his head. Police believe he walks south on Iroquois Street after leaving the home. Police don't know where he intends to go next or if he has a vehicle. He has relatives in the San Juan Quinn Valley, but police don't know if he intends to go in that direction. He was recently released from state prison and placed on post-release community supervision. He's been in prison for assault with a deadly weapon and weapon possession charges, unrelated to the victim in this case. The investigation into the matter continues. 37-year-old Denise Amy Law fatally beat an elderly woman during a dispute about the suspect's boyfriend. At around 2.40pm on Thursday the 2nd of November, authorities responded to a property at 3532 Riverway Drive in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on reports of an assault. When officers arrived, they found an unresponsive elderly woman outside on the ground with multiple severe injuries to her head and face. Medics transported her to a local hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The victim was identified as 66-year-old Melissa Reed. Authorities said that Denise confronted Melissa inside the home because Denise believed Melissa wanted a relationship with her boyfriend. They argued and the dispute continued outside, where Denise hit Melissa with a metal walker. A witness informed police that Melissa fell to the ground, and Denise continued striking her until bystanders intervened. Denise also tossed Melissa's cell phone into a storm drain, which was later retrieved by firefighters. Police arrested Denise and charged her with first-degree murder, and she's held at the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison. It's unclear how the suspect and the victim knew each other. The investigation into the matter continues. A 75-year-old former teacher's aide of a private religious school in Tama, Wisconsin, will spend the next decade behind bars for forcibly and repeatedly sexually abusing a teenage boy. On Friday the 27th of October 2023, Ann Nelson Kosh was sentenced to 10 years in prison, with 15 years of supervised release for the assaults which occurred in 2016. On the 31st of July 2023, Ann was convicted to 25 separate counts related to abuse. The charges included 12 counts of sexual assault of a child in the second degree, 4 counts of child enticement sexual conduct, 8 counts of exposing intimate parts to a child, and 1 count of intimidating a victim. The district attorney's office argued for 100 years in prison. In 2016, Anne repeatedly forced the teen victim to engage in oral sex and sodomy in the basement of Toma Baptist Academy where she worked. In April of 2022, Anne was charged after a victim came forward to law enforcement and described the abuse he suffered. Judge Richard Radcliffe said Anne used a position of power over the victim to meet her own needs, recognising Anne was an authority figure trusted by the victim. Assistant District Attorney Sarah Skiles praised the victim for coming forward and reporting the abuse to law enforcement and described him as an incredibly brave young man. She added that a sexual predator has been held accountable for her heinous actions and will not be a threat to our community for the next 10 years. 